you want to be able to approach any girl anytime i got you number one your looks despite what some people may tell you your looks matter if a girl is minding her own business and is then interrupted out of the blue by some random man who could be a potential threat but at the very least a potential waste of her time he is going to need to present himself well to even get through the door in the first place we judge books by their cover that's just what we do as humans so that being said don't dress like a vagabond and then be shocked that you keep getting girls who just don't want to stop and talk to you you look crazy i coached a guy who used to dress like an elementary boy as a like 24 year old man and you don't need to dress like you're going to a wedding right you don't need to dress like james bond but you need to put in some effort to your presentation clean clothes minimal wrinkles nicely fitting clothes some sort of color coordination going on just don't look gross number two is your hygiene You'd be surprised how many men I coach who flat out ignore their hygiene. I've had to tell men to get food out of their teeth. I've had to tell men to use mouthwash, put on deodorant because they smell bad, clean their fingernails. The same client I discussed earlier who dressed like an elementary school child would also go out with this huge scab looking dry spot on his lip. And mind you, he was very upset about these girls not stopping and giving him the time of day. But let's be honest, what girl is going to want to kiss someone dressed like a child, breath like a dragon and lips like a lizard? Right? No offense if you watch this, you know who you are, but the truth is the truth. Imagine that's a girl with a scab on her lip and really bad breath. You don't want to kiss her. Make sure before you approach girls, your hygiene is on point. Clean breath, no body odor or huge sweat stains, no scabs on your lips or your face or boogers in your nose, no junk under your nails. You would think this to all be common sense, but I'll tell you. <laughs> Number three, your goals and expectations go into approaching girls with a goal and an expectation for me personally if i'm going out to talk to girls my goal and expectation are the same i'm going to leave with the girl and go have some fun for you it may be different different levels right your goal may be to talk to four hot girls get at least three phone numbers after having flirty conversations your expectation needs to be that no matter what happens you will meet girls who are down to meet you as well period. Number four is going to be your voice. Most guys I coach have some kind of issues with their voice when talking to girls. It's a little hard to teach because I'm not coaching you one to one, but let's talk about it. So you're going to try to avoid upward inflection, too much pitchiness and too many repeated tonal patterns. Here are a few examples. So upward inflection sounds like, oh, hey, how you doing? Oh, hey, how are you? You can imagine your voice going up on a scale it goes hey how are you it's like when you talk to a baby or a dog right if me and you were talking we're like hey what's up alan yo what's up bro how you doing and then you see a dog you're like oh my god hi it's a dog and that's also pitchiness the pitch of your voice went way high on that one you want to avoid the upward inflection and the pitchiness uh, another guy i coach he does this when he goes to like chipotle for example we'll be talking about the gym like oh yeah squats were squats were really tough today and then he'll see the the um the food preparer, what do you call the food person? And that person will go, hey, can I can I help you? And he'll go, oh yes, please, can I have a burrito? Thank you, oh yeah, thank you. Upward inflection implies that you are talking to something more delicate than you, or that you feel delicate in that conversation, so you wanna treat it really well and beep, 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 beep. You gotta avoid that. Pitchiness is just your voice going in, like, like kinda like your voice cracking and things like that implies that you don't have the confidence to be speaking to the person you're speaking to because you're talking like this and you just don't have control over what you're saying. Repeated tonal patterns is a tricky one. So I'll coach guys and when they're nervous, they subconsciously fall into a vocal comfort zone. It's a repeated pattern of pitchiness and inflection. So for example, a guy I coached, he would go up to girls and say, hey, I think you're really cute. I just wanted to come say hi. What are you up to? Oh yeah? Do you want to give me your number? That's kind of cool, right? It's it's the same tonal pattern throughout this, the whole conversation. And that is boring, it's monotonous. It also can imply that something's going on up here. I worked with unique populations of teenagers for a long time and I have a degree in psychology. There's something called echolalia where certain sounds and tones are repeated. It can indicate on a subconscious level to some people that maybe something's off in your mind if you keep using the same tone. If I did the whole YouTube video like this, hey guys, my name's Alan and we're about to do this video. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to approach girls. 
and at the end of the video, you're gonna know how to approach girls. It seems like something's off, right? If I'm not coaching you, the best way to find out if you do these things is to actually record some of your interactions on a voice memo app or something and play it back or have a friend help you with that. Now that all of those are out of the way, you need to pick a location where you can find a good number of girls coming and going. Preferably somewhere you can go do something other than just like waiting and talking to girls, like a shopping center where there are food courts and uh, maybe activities or stores to go to. So you're gonna get your eyes set on the hot girl you wanna approach and then just start walking before you start thinking anything. Just start walking. Naturally, you are going to mess up. That is going to happen. You're gonna walk past her. You're gonna get in your head and miss a bunch of opportunities. This is okay, this is natural, this is part of it. It's okay to do a couple of times. It's not okay to do repeatedly because then it'll become a habit and all of a sudden you're just there for hours almost approaching. To battle this, you need a self-punishing system. For every girl you punk out of talking to, maybe you gotta do 15 push-ups on the spot in front of everybody. For every girl you punk out on, you have to give $20 to somebody. Hell, send $20 to me. For every girl you punk out on, you send me 20 bucks. So you see the girl and ideally, as soon as you see her, you start walking. On the way to the girl, try your best to avoid negative thoughts. You can force yourself to think about anything else. What sex might be like with that girl. You can imagine her kissing you. You can think about playing your favorite video game. You can think about Pokemon. You can sing your favorite song in your head or out loud. You can tell yourself, I got this, I'm handsome. You can hype yourself up. You can do anything to manually override your automatic negative thoughts, but you choose not to. Okay, so how do you get her attention? Ideally, you want to approach from the front or from a safe distance at her side. Approaching from behind is not ideal, so try to avoid it, but it's still possible. This means if you see a girl walking toward you, you need to stop her or approach her before she walks past you. And then it becomes a situation where you have to chase her and approach her from behind. You wanna avoid that as much as you can. Again, from a safe distance to where you couldn't grab her purse if you really wanted to, extend your hand, say, excuse me, hate to interrupt you, but I just wanted to meet you for a quick second. There are a ton of things you could say, but that one is particularly easy for any guy at any level. Hey, excuse me, my name's Alan. I just wanted to meet you for a second. Thought you looked cute, just wanted to come say hi. Easier ways to approach are making observations. So if a girl has on some gym shorts, you could say something like, you look like you just had a killer leg workout. You're not asking her a question, you're observing something. After the initial verbal exchange, you can introduce yourself, shake hands or high five. I generally stay away from fist bumps because they're less, they're less investment physically, they're easier to do, handshakes generally better. From there you have your conversation and hopefully leave with the phone number or maybe even leave with the girl to another location. Approaching like this works very often. Common mistakes. One, waiting until the girl is too close or passing you to start your approach. Remember, she is in her own world, not thinking about you, so if you bombard her suddenly with your existence at the last minute, as she passes you, not only might you freak her out, but if she does notice you, it's now way more work for her to stop and turn around to acknowledge you. Your job is to make it easy for her and make your presence known from two to three arms distances away. Two, approaching with half-ass energy. Guys will go in with their heads down, with their shoulders down, with their hands sort of out. Hey, 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 excuse me, hey. The voice sort of working sometimes, almost like that person waiting to jump in, the, you know, the double dutch jump rope game, but never quite does it. Approach it 100%, guys. You're gonna get rejected either way, so you might as well get rejected while doing the reps properly. Three, letting her pass you and then doing the chase of shame. Very often, some of the guys I work with will see girls coming toward them, let the girl pass them by, and then we'll complain that the girl is too far away now. Our brains are very good at justifying counterproductive behaviors. At this point, if you let a girl pass you, you should just punish yourself by saying she's off the board. You, you don't deserve to get her anymore because you let her pass you by. No matter how hot she is, just count that as a loss. Number four, approaching and then bailing out before giving the girl a chance to process the actual approach. Some men will go in half-assed and still get the girl's attention, but the guy will turn and leave Meanwhile, the girl's processing what happened and she's turning around a little bit slow, but she turned around. And by the time she turned around, the guy is already leaving. So it's kind of a weird interaction. So guys, do your best to avoid these mistakes. Use the guidelines set out in this video. And if you are more interested in one-to-one -one coaching, if you want me to take a look at your personal situation, 
approach anxiety, issues with confidence, not knowing how to flirt, not knowing when to flirt, getting ghosted on, and you're interested in one-to-one -one coaching on a month-long, two-month-long, three-month-long basis, click the link in the description. It'll ask you a few questions. It takes about 30 to 45 seconds. And when you fill that out, either I or somebody on my team will get back to you as soon as we can, and we'll see if it's a good fit for one-to-one -one coaching.